Hello, Annie. Hello. Annie, would you like to do the first one for us? Okay. Do you know Do you know how to say this word? Sasquatch. <laughs> Very good, Sasquatch. What about this one, or this phrase? Uh, ever, um, Abom abominable. No, abominable. That's right. Abominable. <laughs> and this bit? Loudness monster. Good. And this one? Yeti. All right. Who do you think that looks like in your class? <laughs> I don't answer. Um, can you do? Do you know which is the answer? It's not. Um, a, do you know Bigfoot? Yes. Mm. But which one is not Bigfoot? Loch Ness monster. That's right. This this is Loch Ness. Is a large. Um, it's like a lake in Scotland, and the there is a myth that there's a monster in it, a big fish or a big lizard. So anyway, Sasquatch, the abominable snow, Yeti are all the monster. Right, Annie, who shall I ask the next question? Coco. All right, Coco, where are you? Hi. Right, <laughs> Hello. It said an artist something <laughs> is... Oh, sorry, Annie, I put you one again. So, Coco, uh, something is a drawing based on what someone has described. Is it compression, suppression, depression, or impression? Impression. That's right. An artist's impression. Is it a real drawing? So is an artist's impression, an artist's impression does it, is it like a photograph or is it different? So Coco, if somebody gave you the impression they were very nice, but later you found they were horrible, that's a, so an impression is, is an opinion. So I have the impression you are a very quiet girl. Is that true? No. <laughs> All right. So my impression is wrong. My impression is wrong. So it's only an impression. It's only an opinion. That's okay. So that's the answer. Okay. So that's the answer. What's compression? It's like, it's like squashing a ball. If you compress, you squeeze. Suppression means stopping stopping something. So if you write an essay and try to put it on a blog and it is suppressed, that means that somebody has said no. It's like censorship. Okay? It's like censorship. What's depression? Depression. Sad. That's right. So if you're depressed, you're sad. Are you depressed, Coco? 
No. Good. Who shall I give the next question to, Coco? Ivy. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Ivy. Good morning, Ivy. Good morning, teacher. Have you had a haircut this week, Ivy? No. So your hair looks different from usual. Ivy, some things say the accident happened just before 3 p.m. Eyewitnesses, onlookers, sites, here or peepers. The witness. Which one? The first one. The first one. That's right. Eyewitnesses. That's correct. What are sites here? A visitor, tourist. Yeah, that's right. So it's like a tourist, somebody looking at the view, or or they're just passing through. Onlooker is a bit like an eyewitness, but they might not have seen. They're just watching. They're not really good. Peepers is um. If you peep at something. So you peeped at your answers. What does that mean? If you peeped at an answer, then mean you cheat on an exam. That's right. You just had a quick look. So it, it doesn't always mean cheat, but it's usually negative. So if I told you to cover your eyes and not watch, and you peeped, that means you had a quick look. That's what children often do. If they're scared, they peep. So. Okay, who shall I give the next one to, Ivy? Um. Amy. Amy, all right. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Just changing this picture, hopefully. Now it says, which of these does not mean out of place, strange or unusual? Are you strange and unusual, Amy? No, I'm usual. Good. <laughs> You're usual. That's good. Now, Amy, yeah, I'm usual. can you say, do you know yeah. how to say these words? Um. Bizarre. Good, bizarre. In incongruous. Yep. Inrefutable. Good. Odd. Yeah, very good. And now, which do you think is the answer? So, which which do you think does not mean strange and unusual? Does not mean. Um, yes. Uh, number three. Yeah, good. Irrefutable. If something is irrefutable, yeah. it means it's correct and not wrong. So it is irrefutable that Amy is a young Asian woman. So we know that yes. to be a fact. Okay, I hope that's correct. <laughs> now, uh, so as I say, that's that's the one that's is correct. Uh, well, it's the one does not mean out of place or strange. Incongruous means there's something wrong about it. Bizarre means strange. Odd means strange. Okay, who's next, Amy? Uh, who's next? Cindy. 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 Okay. Cindy Lynn. Lynn. Okay. All right. Good morning, Cindy Lynn. Good morning, teacher. The word definite is synonymous to, synonymous to which other word? So, in other words, what's the same word as definite? Synonymous means the same.
and let's off uh, con conclusive. Yeah, that's right. That's conclusive. So, so, um, so definite. I'm definitely talking to Cindy Lynn. I'm conclusively talking to Cindy Lynn. They mean the same. Um, now, if you are exclusive, that means that something is only something. So, uh, if you are a vegetarian, you exclusively eat vegetables. Reclusive, do you know what that means, reclusive? Leave uh, all of the CD. Recursive is mean you leave all of the society. Yeah, you sort of leave society. So if you are a recluse, you live by yourself, you don't want company. So we might say, if you were living by yourself, you might say, Cindy Lynn is reclusive. She doesn't like friends, she wants to be alone. And inclusive is the opposite. So if you have a big group of, you want to be included, you know, that means you include something. Okay, now, what? what's this thing? I'll tell you it's called a gavel. That's the name of, of this thing. It's called a gavel. What's it for? What's its purpose? Um, the judge. The judge uses yes. the thing to to do what to to uh, uh, to 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 judge uh, some people. Yes, sort of. So it says, "I find you guilty." Boom! You are sentenced to twenty years in jail. And he bangs his gavel. Do, do, do judges in Taiwan use these? Yes. Hmm, interesting. All right, who, sh who does the last one, Cindy? Rita. Rita, okay. I used to have a girlfriend called Rita when I was 16. Hello, Rita. Hello, teacher. Um, Rita, the word, the, sorry, the prefix crypto. Pre prefix means coming before another word. So the, the prefix here is crypto, and the main word is zoology. Now, do you know what zoology means? A science, uh, a study of animal. That's right. That's all it is. So, w what word? Do you know inside there? What word can you tell me that means a place we keep animals? Zoo. Yeah, zoo. That's right. That's where we get zoo from. So zoo comes from zoology. And apparently it's from Greek. Now, what do you think cryptozoology means?
a study of uh, un unknown animals? Um, no. It's nearly there. Uh, mysterious method. N no. Equipment. No. Secret. No. <laughs> um, it, it, they're hidden. So you can't find them. So cryptozoology. This is like the Loch Ness Monster. I'm just looking up Wikipedia here because I, d I don't think it's a very fair question, to be honest. It's um, just a minute. I'll show you what the definition is. Oh dear! Just a minute. So, cryptozoology, the study of hidden animals. So, I'm saying it's hidden is the correct answer. And it's a pseudoscience. It's not one that's really well established. So, uh, the answer to that is prob probably hidden. That means that you d you're not sure. But the, it's, sort of, it's sort of like the others as well. So, mysterious and unknown and secret. What's mysterious? Are you a mysterious woman? No, I'm not. What does a mis if you somebody says somebody is a mysterious woman? What do you think that means? If I if I called you mysterious, is that positive or negative? Negative. Mm, not necessarily. Might mean positive. So if a boy said, "Oh, I think she's really mysterious," that boy could be attracted to you. Or if you said it about a boy. So a mysterious woman is one who uh, somebody you're curious about. You want to know more about them. So it depends on how you use the word. Thank you, Stevie. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Okay, reading. Now this is taking Taiwan design to the world stage. Industrial design. Actually, um, go back to the top. L Lulu, hello. Hello, teacher. Lulu, if you talk about the world stage, what does that mean? The place. Yeah, the whole of the world. So, if you were a, a famous dancer and you took to the world stage, that means you'd be performing all over the world. So here, they're saying that Taiwanese design, so something design, is going all over the world. That's all. It's like global, like global or going global, it's going to the whole world. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question in a minute. I don't know what it is yet, you but I'll ask you another one. Now, it says this, so somebody's taking Taiwanese design to the world, industrial design. 
took root in Taiwan. Took root means started in the 1960s, but it's coming into its prime. That means it's becoming, it's now becoming really good. So the prime is the, it's becoming it to its best time in the 21st century. As a new generation of designers reflect the challenges of advanced technology and changing times, designers often derive ideas from their experience in numerous facets of life, including culture, history, customs, and entertainment. So this bit, the first sentence, is talking about industrial design. So that's things to do with industry. And it's now coming, it's becoming well recognized and good. And it, the reason is it reflects the challenges of advanced design and changing times. So a new generation are making designs that meet the needs of a modern work, the modern workplace and industry. Now, designers get ideas from their experiences. So some of them are in a big city, and it can be culture, history, customs, entertainment. So there's four things that in affect the experience of the designers, culture, history, customs, and entertainment. Lulu, what's your culture? Taiwanese Good. Hmm? How does being Taiwanese affect Taiwanese your thinking? Your thinking. Hmm. Or if you like, how does your culture influence you? School or friends? Yeah. What food do you eat? Rice noodles. What? Why? Why? Mm. Because you're Taiwanese. Taiwanese. What language do you speak? What language? Taiwanese. Yep, Taiwanese. And um, do you expect to get married and have a family? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's a conservative culture. Conservative culture. So your parents are so your conservative parents means that, conservative that, means that you'll get a job, you'll have a family, a you'll get married and live happily ever after. And as a Taiwanese girl, you, you will do what your parents tell you. So Culture is very important in the way you think. Now they're saying here that um, designers get ideas from their culture, from their history, <coughs> their customs, their entertainment. And in fact, your culture is often related to history and to your customs. So customs are important. James, hello. Hello, teacher. Yeah, which customs do you... Yeah, so, you're, you're Taiwanese. So, you're Taiwanese. Yes. Which Taiwanese custom do you not like? Custom do you not like? Um, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. What do you like? What do you like? About your crafting <laughs> Taiwanese. <laughs> What's good about it? What's good about it? All right. Would you like to live in China? Yes. 
<laughs> Would you like to be born in China? Yes. I'm not winning here, am I? Um, hmm? Do you like freedom? Do you like freedom? Yes. Right. Is is China is China's China, youth free? China's youth free. Free? Uh, can they say? Can they can give they say any say opinion? Any opinion? In public? No. About the government? No. Government. No. no. Right. Can you do that in Taiwan? Right. Can you do that in Taiwan? Yes. Right. Do you like your freedom? Right. Do you like your freedom? Yes. Right. Therefore, you like being Taiwanese. Therefore, you like being Taiwanese. For example. For example. Okay. 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 And I'm sure there's other things you like about sure it as well. Like All, right, All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Anyway, according to Liu Wei Gong. Liu Wei Gong. And I apologise if that's not the right pronunciation. He's Commissioner of Taipei City Department of Cultural Affairs. I don't know what that does, but it's something to do with culture in Taipei. A city's greatest competitive potential lies in its creativity. So potential is what you might be able to do, and it lies in its creativity. Joanna? Yes? Are you a creative young woman? I think yes. Give me an example of why. Give me an example of why. Um. I can come up with many um different ideas. Good. So creative ideas. Creative now, ideas. why? Now what does this why? mean? A city's greatest competitive potential lies in its creativity. If Taipei is creative, how does that help it to be competitive in the world? Do you understand my question? Yes. Mm, I if you are creative, you can do many things that other people haven't been that's so yeah you can be competitive that's right so uh, tai Taiwan has got a reputation of being a world leader um, in some areas of industry you, your designs are well thought of I don't know about Taipei, but they're saying that the people in Taiwan are creative, and that means they're competitive across the world. But potential means it can, it might be. So it's not, it's not definite. But if you're creative, you've got more chance of getting, you know, being money. What do you want to do in the future, Joanne? What do you have a a job you would like to do? Information engineer. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, yeah, computer engineer. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? Mm, that means I need to design software. Right. So you design software? So you design software? In the future? <laughs> what what area of yes. software engineering would you like? Software engineering would you like? Mm, maybe um smartphone app. Mm hmm Good. My brother is a computer engineer and he has written several apps for the iPhone and um, he does quite well out of them. He gets a quite a bit of money. So if you can find the Google app in a few years, it might be Joanne the Millionaire. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you, Joanne. So, in other words, she's creative. A lot of competitive potential in the area of software engineering, hopefully. Now, Liu, we're talking about this guy again, he, be he believes that people are the crucial element in design. So people are the most important element, the most important thing in design. And his agency is talking about the Department of Cultural Affairs, his agency, hopes to assist designers in entering the market. So he believes people are important and they're the most, you know, he wants to help them get into the market. Um, Alan. Yes. Uh, Why are people important? Why are people important? In design. Because design is for the people. Yes. yes. Who comes up with the ideas? People. That's right. So creative That's right. people give ideas. That's why they're crucial, very important, crucial in design. Now, he has this office. Sorry. He has this office. He calls it an agency. It's referring to the Taipei City of Cultural Affairs. How does he help people? So, how, what, does, what does his agency do to help people? Actually, I'm going to ask that to Claire in a minute, not you, Alan. So, my question is, how does his agency help people? Well, that would be the next question. Anyway, going to this end. So, in other words, he wants to assist people. The DOCA, which is the Department of Cultural Affairs, co-organizes and otherwise supports events, such as Taiwan Designers Week, Taipei Design Expo, Taiwan International Culture and Creative Industrial Expo. So Claire, where are you? What does this agency Hi, do to help people? Um. Support in events. Yes. Now give me an example of two events. Taiwan Designers Week. Good. Another one. Taipei World De Design Expo. What's an expo? Exploration. No, it actually stands for exposition. So exhibition. Uh, yeah, it can. It's like an exhibition, actually. And everybody has little stalls. Just a minute. And they sh they show what they can do. So, I suppose you're going to be an information technology information uh, technology as well. Are you working in that area? Yes. Okay. So, if you look carefully, you can see Claire here. So she's attending an expo, and you know, people go to expos to get ideas or to show their ideas to other people. Now, what are these?
doctor. Yeah. I'm going to say they're good as to hold the warehouse up. It's in a big warehouse. I don't know what they are, to be honest, but it's something to do with the structure. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. So... Okay. All right. I don't know what's going on there. Just a loss of internet service. All right. Among the young talents connecting design with urban life at this year's Designer Week was Li Wei Lang, amazed by com commuters' fascination with compact mobile devices such as smartphones. Um, you need to know what a commuter is. Um, who wanted to be, yeah, uh, he proposed attaching a cell phone to the rear view mirror of a motorbike to give directions, record the route taken, circumventing the, all right, so he's got a motorbike and he wants to put a minute, I need a picture of a motorbike to explain this. today. So he's talking about putting a motor, sorry these are very slow to upload today for some reason. Right, um, who shall I ask? Karina. Hi. He wants to put a mirror on the rear view mirror, so I can't see a rear, let's say the rear view mirror is here. He wants to stick a smartphone here. Okay, so he wants to put a smartphone here, and the reason is that he says to give directions and record the route taken and this circumventing means get around so it, it means to to avoid so you want are you allowed to use mobile phones on to talk on motorbikes Karina if you had a motorbike is it a good idea to use a mobile phone
Mm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, do, do you might. can you yeah. can you ride a motorbike? Yes. Right. Do you use your mobile phone when you are riding? No, I won't. Why not? It may make me not concentrate when I ride. That's right. So you'll have an accident and probably kill yourself. In Australia, Australia, we call motorbikes donor cycles. That's because they donate organs to other people. If they have an accident, it tends to kill them. Now, do you think this is a good idea, putting a cell phone on the rear view mirror to give directions and record the route taken? Yes. Okay. What happens if the phone rings? Um, don't take it. Mm, that's a problem. Mm, that's a problem. Uh, so, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem a very good idea to me. But perhaps it stops the signal. I don't know. But anyway. So that's interesting. Okay, thank you, Karina. Now, he says, he's talking about this guy again. After observing many people incessantly, that means all the time, checking messages and sliding their fingers across their touch screens, uh, Pao <laughs> Shang Lin uh, came up with a finger bocker, a hanging cage in which they can lock up their smartphones and spend more quality time with friends. Um, Rosie. Hi, teacher. Have you got a smartphone? Yes. Do you spend a lot of time on it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Maybe. What's a finger blocker? What's the, finger blocker? What's the point? Uh, a mo motor bike with no. Forget about the motorbike. Forget about the motorbike. Huh? Oh. This is something else. It's a hanging something cage. A hanging cage. Mm. So a little cage. So you put your mobile inside it, mobile inside it. Mm. and lock it up. And lock it up. Why? Uh. Why? To let it stay still. Yes, <laughs> and and what does that make you do? Spend more quality time with friends. That's right. That so it makes you socialize. So it makes you socialize. Mm. With your friends. Now, do you think it's a good idea or not? Uh, no. <laughs> Have you got a Facebook page? Yes. Okay, in yes, Chinese, Chinese or English? Chinese. Oh, okay. Mm. Do you use it a lot? Do you use it a lot? Yes. <laughs> hmm. How many friends have you got? How many friends have you got? Uh, I haven't count counted. So you've got many, many. Many, many. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a finger blocker would not be a good idea for you. Oh, yes. All right, thank you, Rosie. All right, thank you, Rosie. Mm, thank you. I have some of the boys and girls in my class. I teach, sometimes teach a young class of, t of young teenagers, and they they all have smartphones. And I have actually put a, a cell phone blocker in the classroom. It's a, it's a signal blocker. 
um, Johnny, why have I done that? Why have I done that? Why have I put a signal blocker in the classroom? Sorry? Uh, in my classroom, yes. I've put a signal blocker to block mobile phones. Why do you think I've done that? This is teaching a class of 14-year-olds. Sorry, can would you please repeat that yeah. question? In my class, I have put in, I have put in a blocker. It's called a signal blocker, and it stops them using their mobile phones. Why have I done that? Many students not use their uh, phone. <laughs> That's right. So they to stop them playing with their phones during lessons. I've been using it about four weeks, and no one has discovered why their phones are not working. So they're they're all still trying to work out why they can't get a signal in my classroom. They haven't they haven't worked it out yet. So it's quite interesting. Now Wu Xia Heng, a director with Balance Wu Design, seeks to improve the quality of life through organic design. Um Elisa, I'm going to ask you what organic design is in a minute. It's not a very nice question because it's not easy to define. Okay. But do you think you can try? So to see if you can tell me what it is in a minute. Okay. So anyway, the firms, he's sort of talking about his firm. Uh, he has a donut shaped MP3 speak. A donut is, remember, sort of like that. There's a hole in the middle. A donut shaped MP3 speaker. Pulp pop, it's called. It's made of recycled pulp. Um, I think he's talking about wood pulp. So in, it's made of recycled wood or something like that. And it's so simple to use that customers need no instructions. It amplifies sound. It makes sound greater, increases sound. It amplifies sound through the vibration inside the speaker's hollow space. So it works by making sound, they have a wooden structure and the sound bounces around, bounces around inside the uh, speaker. Let me see if there's a picture. That's interesting, there is. Um, so this is what they're talking about. And apparently this is called a pull pot. I've never heard of this. This is new. And it's made of, I think it's made of wood or recycled wood. And basically the sound comes in here. Sorry, the sound goes in there and it bounces around, which makes it louder and I guess puts it out here. So that's the Taiwan, that's the Taiwanese design apparently. So it's very simple. It's made of recycled wood or whatever pulp is. Now, Elisa, what do you think an organic design is? Um, use the uh, friendly uh, the yeah. uh, green materials to build a That's good. to build a building and it will be That's right. friendly to the world. Earth. Green products, eco-friendly. 
Now, yeah. there's a word in here that is like, it's a green word. What word is it? So it, I'm telling you, it's a green word. It's something to do with being friendly to the environment. What word is it? Teacher, could, could you repeat the question again? Yeah. Inside the paragraph, Inside the paragraph. Yeah. there's a word which is uh, something to do with, um, with um, being green. So you, you said that organic design is, is green. That's correct. There's another word that's to do with being green or it favors it's good for the e ecology good for the environment what word is it uh, um recycle that's right that's right recycled so anything that's recycled is supposed to be good because that means we don't use up uh, our resources. Yes. So he's recycling pulp. I think it's wood pulp, but I'm not sure. And so, you know, by recycling pulp, it means that something is not being used. Also, um, uh, this. How else is this speaker green? So he said one aspect is that it's recycled material, and there's another there's another thing about this speaker that just a minute I'll put the picture back up. Why what it's made of recycled material? Why else is it green? So when it's recycled, what's the other reason it's green? Uh, recycle, reuse. Yeah, but there's, an, there's another there's another feature of the speaker that is 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 a green feature. It's saving something or not using something. Is it is it a powered speaker? Yeah. Uh, maybe save, saving the uh, energy or resource. That's right. There's no plug. You don't need electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's coming from the iPhone, from, from the battery. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, it doesn't need electricity. That's another green feature. You don't need to power the speaker. Some speakers you need to actually plug in. There's no plug. The only one you're doing here is sticking it in the back of the phone. So that's another green feature. Elisa, do you think it's important um, to be green? Yes. Um, because... Do you... Uh, yeah, go on. Um, because of global warming, we have to do more uh, mm. just like the... Uh, um, do you, do you believe in global warming? Yeah, sorry. Do you think global warming is real? Uh, yes, uh, but uh, but the concentration of the carbon dioxide is increasing year by year. And what's happening to the Antarctic? The ice is uh, is melting. Yep. And what effects um, is the Antarctic ice? Is it um, fresh water or sea water? Uh, 
about about I think it's fresh fresh uh huh I'm not sure that's just a question <laughs> but I think the the Antarctic is regarded as holding stores of fresh water I think I'm not sure in 2050, how old will you be? Maybe 50. Really? 70, how old? 70? When were you born? 19... 1993. Okay, that's not 70. It's not 60 either. So, uh, about 57? Yeah. Don't, don't put too many years on yourself. <laughs> how, <coughs> how do you think life will change? by 2050. So you tell me, you make a prediction. What do you think, your, how do you think your life will be in, that, in 2050? What will be different to now, apart from the fact you're older? Uh, <laughs> and I don't mean, I don't mean about being married with grandchildren or something. Mm -hmm. I mean living. So how will life change in Taiwan? Mm. I hope uh, the life when I was uh, when in 2050 will be more better than now. I hope so. In, right, give it, in what way? Give me one example how it might be better. Uh, everyone have uh, have jobs and uh, can earn many money and to enjoy their life. Good. We don't say many money. No, mu much money. Don't, don't worry. That's a favor. That's a favor Asian expression. They always saying I I I love many. We say much money, or better a lot of. Uh, yeah. Now, w will we still use petrol for cars? How do you think cars will be powered? Um. Uh, mm, maybe you will turn. Uh, like use uh, 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 maybe you use a small chip to uh, and you can for yeah. some money inside, and you can be. just uh, use the small chip to to buy anything. Mm. There's many ways. And um, do you have these in Taiwan? No, but maybe mm. I think in the uh, maybe fit maybe third. 30 or 20 years ago, Taiwan, traditional Taiwan, Taiwan society had this vehicle. Mm. <laughs> we call them, in English, we call them tuk-tuks. And um, I was in Malaysia last year. And I used to get a tuk-tuk from my hotel to the place I was teaching every morning. It was, a, it was only a dollar. Very cheap. Okay. Um, should we have a break for a few minutes, Bill? Okay.
Okay. So about a few minutes. So I'm just going to have a break and then we'll come back. Thank you. Carlos, are you there today? Mr. Carlos, how are you? Uh, hello, teacher. Hello, Carlos. Can you do the first question, please? First two questions. Okay. So, why why has the Turkey student signed up? And what's the question of the week? Okay. So they're yours. Ray. No Ray. He's not a ray of sunshine. Amy. Oh, Amy, you've done something already. Kim. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Uh, Tim, can you do these? What word? <coughs> excuse me. What word is used to give an example? And also this one. What does it mean when a base is touched by a baseball player? Okay. Thank you. Leonardo. Yes, sir. Can you do the last three questions? They're, they're very similar. Um, and so just do those three, five, six, seven. Okay, that'd be good. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, you can start that playing when you're ready.
Okay, Carlos. Why is this a Turkish student signed up? Uh, she signed up for the class because she was having a communication gap problem. Yes, good. In other words, her English isn't good enough. And mainly also a lot of business with British and Americans. She can't understand them. What's the question of the week, Carlos? Uh, the question was, do native English-speaking people use the same idioms uh, comes from sport and in business? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Tim. What word was used to give an example? Yep. Good. And what does it mean when a base is touched by a baseball player? It means that uh, the baseball player is safe. Yep. And what does it mean? Um, we run out of the game. And what does it, m they are safe from being run out of the game, correct. What does the expression of touch base with somebody mean in business? Well, to, you need to cover that subject later. Yes. You get, need to get together to have a chat. Get to have a chat. Nice. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Le uh, Leonard. I think we've may have asked one of your questions. What soft base? Soft base means when a base taught a when the base taught a um, they are safe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, that's right. Means you're out of the game. You're out of the game. Yeah. And what what's about off what base in a business setting? It means that you are out of the game and usually it used in budget calculation. Mm -hmm. And you're out of the game, it in means accurate. you're not really doing yeah. You're wrong about something. Yeah. Wrong about something. Not so if you're off base, you're out of the game and you're wrong. Do you play baseball then? No. Why I not? never played. What sport do you do? Usually I do swimming. Swimming? That keeps you healthy. I should do swimming, but I don't like it. <laughs> do you wear goggles? Pardon me? Do you wear swimming goggles over your eyes? Oh, yeah. Mm, why? Because if I don't wear it, my eyes will really hurt. <laughs> That's right, they become sore. Right. They're not nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wendy, can you load that up again, please? Another one. Another one. Clean you and then stop. All right. Okay. Just let me give. Can you click continue then stop, Wendy? Now there's one, two, three, four, five questions there. Um, James. Yes. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> have you have you 
a few talks today, James. I think you have. Yes, I had. All right, thank you. I got him mixed up in the list here. Um, Dave. Hello. Can you can you do the first question there? What are the three examples of things that People Network can help you with? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Can you describe the problem with social networks? Yes. And also the next question, how is the problem solved? Okay? The two questions. Okay. All right. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello, Professor. Yeah. Uh, Pano, can you do the last two questions? So, how the friends? Yeah. And how does this help you? Okay. Right. Thank you. You can start that playing when you're ready, Wendy. Please. Okay, um, Dave, what are the three examples of things that people network help you with? Uh, finding job. Yep. And finding a partner. Yep. <laughs> and meet new friends. That's right. Now, which is most important to you? Uh, finding jobs. Not a partner. Not a partner. And maybe they are How both does important. Yeah. How does um, finding a job... How do you find it on Facebook? Maybe... Not. Mm. Well, would would you put your resume on Facebook? No. Why not? Why not? Uh, I think your Facebook is a social network, not a 
Mm. I agree with you. Agree it's with not you. a job place, not but job place, but some people do it people and it can it. reveal a lot of information that perhaps you should keep private. Anyway, depends. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Jimmy. Hi. What's the problem with social networks? I mean, real world, you can, um, you cannot see the potential social networking between your friends. That's right. So the problem is most of the connections are hidden. You can't see them. So how do you, how do those social network people solve it? Um, the site show um, your friends and who your your friends are, your mm. your friends' friends. So mm. you can easily see through the connection between you and mm. other people. Yeah, Jimmy, what do you yeah, use Jimmy, your Facebook for? Um, just to browse some. Um, Different informations f of friends. Mm. And you, you have only Taiwanese friends. No, some, some foreign friends too. Where from? Pardon? Where? What country from? Hmm. American, Canadian. Hmm. Have you met them, or have you just formed a friendship online? Some are just online friends, some were my teachers, and some okay. are friends who I met in Taiwan. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Pano, how are you? Hi. Can you only see your friends on these sites? Uh, no, not only my friends. Uh, so, also a friend, I friend not. A friend of a friend of a friend. How does this help you? Yeah. Um, maybe I can find out who who's my friend's friend, and I also know as also have connect with them. Yes, you have connections, so you can reach your destination, new job, new partner, great place to live. So, which is the most important for you? Jobs. Friends or partners? Mm. I know which is the most important for you. Job. Mm. Job. Uh, yeah, at you, your age, perhaps. But um, a great place to live. All that comes in the future. Do you want to stay in Taiwan, Pano? Do you want to live in Taiwan? Maybe not. I pray not, because mm. the mm. Taiwan social is just uh, terrible. Is it? Where would you like to go? Probably, probably China. Maybe. Mm, okay. There's many opportunities there. It's certainly a bigger place. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pana. Thank you for feature. Right. Now. Surrogacy. Lulu. Hello, teacher. What is a surrogate? I don't know. <coughs> All right, I'll come back and ask you at the end of the first paragraph. Okay. Okay. So you need to tell me what surrogacy is or surrogate. So Chinese couples go to the U.S. Wealthy Chinese couples are increasingly spending big on securing surrogate mothers in the United States who can bear them a child on U.S. soil. Children born in the country are automatically conferred U.S. citizenship. So these mothers, these Chinese couples, they go to America 
to find a surrogate mother to bear them a child, to have a child on U.S. soil because children born are automatically given U.S. citizens. So, Joanne. Yes. Why are the couples going to China? Why are Chinese couples going to the U.S.? Or what are they doing? They want to get babies. That's right. Because? <laughs> Joanne, does the mother have the baby? No. Right. So, who has? Who has the baby? Um. Uh. And America. Mm. That's correct. And why? Why are they doing it? What's the point? What's the aim? They want their children to become American citizens. Mm, that's right. It's very interesting. Um, thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Okay, Lulu, what's surrogacy? children. That's right. So it means that if you were a surrogate mother, you, were a surrogate mother, you would have a child for somebody, else. Child for somebody else. And then at the end of the pregnancy, the you would give that child back to the couple, even though it's your child, it belongs to them. So that was a surrogate mother. Usually money changes hands. Okay, Mike. Okay, Mike. Hi. Would you like to be a surrogate mother, Mike? Uh, if there's a chance, sure. Do you think there's a chance? Um, of being my life surrogate time. mother? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe next life. Maybe next life. All right. Fair enough. Life, Do you believe in reincarnation? What? Do you know what reincarnation is? Um. Mm, yes, maybe. So you intend coming back as a woman in the next life? I think I'll choose men again. Yeah. So a woman is not an improvement over a man. Um, you can say that. Caref um, careful. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Woman is better than, than a man. <laughs> All right. All right. That is. Hmm. Right. Now, right. with free food, food safety scandals, poor air quality, that a presser cooker um, of education that should be pressure cooker, not presser cooker. It's pressure pressure cooker education system and the absence of the rule of law, the safety net of permanent residents in Western countries is something many Chinese covet. Covet means you want something. So if you covet something, it means you really want it. So they've got four things, poor air quality, food problems, a rotten education system, and poor laws. So that's in China. So they want to have a safety net. They want to go somewhere that they think it's safe and at the moment they see the uh, US as a place that's 
better than China. Greater numbers of affluent Chinese, affluent means rich, are finding ways to move their cash and families abroad. The recent upward trend in birth, tourism, and foreign surrogacy reflect this. Um, Alan. Oh. Hello, Alan. Um, what's birth tourism? What what's this here? Birth tourism. Because you can just a trip. Yeah, you take a trip. You, take a trip. you, pretend, you pretend you're a tourist. Then what? Then what? Mm. You can get a country passport. Yes, by having a by having getting a woman pregnant in the US. You can uh, get the passport for the children. Do you see any problems with this? So, what sort of problems do you think can occur, Alan? So, you, your child, say you did this, say you would, your child is in the United States. What's going to be the problem? Actually, I was like this. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, my mom. Have you had. When, when yeah. my parents. Yeah. When my parents. No. No, I said when my parents study in the USA and they call me. Do, do you have a. Do, an, you, have do a, you have a US citizen? Do you have a US citizen? Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. How, many How many years did you spend there? Mm, three years. So you didn't really learn much English? Yeah. That's still very useful. And you, your, your mother had you, didn't she? Your mother had you, didn't she? Yes. All right. So you, you're sort of like this, minus the surrogate. All right. Now let's pretend that right, let's, let's pretend, pretend that you were a surrogate. You were a surrogate. So your mother okay. gave you to another mother, mother to, have. to another mother to have. What's the problem, or potential problem? Maybe in your mind you may have two mothers and mm. exactly. And who's going to look after you? Yeah. Do you stay in the States with mother or do you come home to Taiwan or China? So there's a lot of lot of possible problems. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with us. That was quite interesting. Okay. Um now let's go to um Vicky. Yes. Okay. Vicky, what what is a pressure cooker education system? Pressure education. Uh, That's style. right. <laughs> That's right. What's a pressure cooker? Under pressure. Yeah, and how does that how does that help cooking? To make it more quickly. And That's efficient. right. That's exactly what it does. So you have to make sure everything's screwed down or the top blows off. But the increased pressure decreases the time for cooking. 
So they say that in China, they want the education quickly. So they, they give you lots of pressure and you come out the other end more successful and better sometimes. Do you think that the system in Taiwan is similar, Vicky? Do you think that in Taiwan it's a pressure cooker system? You mean education? I do. Uh, yes. We are similar. Yes. In Australia, a lot of Asian couples make their kids go to cram school. So they do they go to school at nine o'clock in the morning, they leave school about three PM and then at four PM they start cram school and they stay at cram school probably two to three hours. And I'm sure a lot of a lot of people in Taiwan do that as well. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I I tutor to. Um, they're actually young women now, about uh, seventeen and twenty, and I've known these two for ten years. So I've been their tutor here in Australia for ten years. They're they're both Taiwanese actually, and they they do about twelve hours a day and their mother makes them work for two hours in the evening in a uh, in a florist. Do you know what a florist is? Flower shop. Yes. So, so they work, Answer. they study, they go home to sleep. And they're both very clever. Or I should say very successful. Um, one girl is clever, the other is, um, they're both good, but one girl, it's easy, the other one really struggles because of the hours. But it, they, even in Australia, they're still in the pressure cooker system. Okay, thank you, Vicky. Now, U.S. surrogacy agencies report a huge surge. A surge means a rise in applications from Chinese couples. Many are shelling out. That means spending, spending money, as much as 200,000 with a privilege. To answer this increasing demand, such businesses are creating Chinese language websites and hiring Mandarin-speaking staff to cater to mainland Chinese clients. So. There's been a big rise in the number of people looking for surrogacy. They're taking on Mandarin-speaking staff to cater means to meet all these Chinese clients. Um, now, for the privilege, um, Josh Henry, you're very quiet today. How are you? I'm fine. Have you had a good week? Yeah. Have you got children yet? Of course not. How many would you like? Three, four, five? Uh, I'll settle with one. All right, one's good. Now, it says the Chinese are paying. Shelling means paying, shelling out. That's a good exam question, shelling out. What does shelling out mean? Anyway, it says as much as 200 for the privilege. What does privilege mean, Henry? What's a privilege? It means something you can do but others can't. Good. And what's the privilege they're paying money for here? Staying stay using the U.S. surgery agency. Yes, no, I mean and a lot of people. In USA. Yeah. yeah, and using the surrogacy, and most people don't have two hundred thousand US. That's probably over a million new Taiwan dollars. <laughs> yeah, at least I don't. No, no. Well, you may one day. You may be very successful. Thank you. If if you only have one child, that's a good start. Because children are very expensive. <laughs> yes. 
You I know. also have to find a wife. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, Boston, Boston-based Circle Surrogacy. So it's it's in Boston, and its name is Circle Surrogacy. Handles 140 cases a year, and it's serviced half a dozen cases from Chinese clients in the last few years. So it's not just Chinese. Chi it's not just Chinese clients. There are other people. Um, so 140. They've had about a dozen. So out of their total load, uh, 12 out of 140 are um, from China. So it's not, you know, there's a few. So this guy says, I'd be surprised if you called me back in four months and that number hadn't doubled. So uh, this guy says, that's the level of interest we've seen this year from China and very serious conversation we've had with people who will be joining us in the next three to four months. Uh, Jocelyn, hello. Hi. Jocelyn, the, the, this guy called John Weltman, he's making a prediction about Chinese couples. What's the prediction he's making? So he's talking about surrogacy. What's, he, what's the prediction he's making? All right, Jocelyn, do you know what a dozen is? No. That's right. So what is half a dozen? So what is half a dozen? Um, six. That's right, six. That's right. Twelve divided by six. Divided by six. So that's half a dozen. Now, so half at half the half moment, half. this this place, this uh, company, has six, actually I made a mistake, I said 12. Six Chinese couples every year come for surrogacy. Now he's saying, he's making a prediction. He, If you called me back and that number hadn't doubled, he would be surprised. So he's predicting that the number will double. So that's his prediction. He's, he's making, he's made it strange. He hasn't said it will double, he's said He'd be surprised if he called him back if they hadn't doubled. So he's using a negative, but in fact, he's saying that I think that if you call me back, the number will double. So how many couples does he think will come next year? Twelve. That's right. So That's right. it's double. It's going to be twelve. Now, what do you think of all this, and Jocelyn? Do you think surrogacy is a good thing or not so good? Mm, maybe. Not good. Why? Why? Mm, it violates our. Yeah. Morality. Okay, so it violates. So it violates your. Did you say morality? Did you say morality? Yes. Okay, what? Okay, All right. What? All right. I agree. So I'm going to call morality beliefs. So not everybody agrees with surrogacy because they say it's somebody else's baby. It also depends on how you have the baby because 
uh, thank you, Jocelyn, because there are different surrogacy. Sometimes they can use, um, just a minute, do you use these signs in Taiwan? Um, Henry, oh no, Leo. Hello, Leo. Hello, teacher. Leo, do you know what these signs mean? The left one means uh, boy, and the right one means girl. Yeah. So all right. Oh, so all right. you do know them. I don't. I don't know. We we use these quite a lot. All right. Well, when we have a surrogate child, you can use sperm from the father and eggs from the mother and put them in another woman to have the baby. So in fact it's it's if you like it's your baby. Sometimes they only use the eggs from the woman or the sperm from the father. So it's only half your child. Sometimes they don't use it at all. So it's not really your child, it's adopted. So there's many ways of having a surrogate child. Um, I think that what is happening, sorry. Oh, where's it gone? Just a minute, I've lost my text, sorry. I think that what they're doing here is they're providing their own sperm and eggs so the child is actually theirs. So, however, some people believe that having surrogate is is you know it, it is a it, it is a matter of morality or um, ethics and they say it shouldn't do it and actually in Australia it's forbidden actually I tell now in Australia um, it's allowed but not you not no payment is to take place so they can only do it if it's for a couple that cannot have children you're not allowed to pay the mother so so leo what have you what what do you think about surrogacy you think it should be allowed or not allowed I think it uh, should not be allowed because because, because I I can uh, explain why I I think it should be All right. it should not be allowed, but I just think so. That's fine. Now, what about if you discover that your future wife cannot have a child? Would you then agree if she wanted a child? Or get rid of the wife and find a new one. Well, you've got uh, four options there. Yeah, adopt. Surrogacy? Adopt. Where would you get one from? Where would you get one from?
Leo, is adoption easy in Taiwan? It is legal, but uh, it is not. Uh, it isn't easy. No, uh, in Australia, it's very hard as not many babies are available, and also the um, criteria the um, for adoption uh, are very strict. So you've got to be, um, I don't know them fully, but you've got to be healthy. You can't be fat. You must be healthy. You must be in a, usually in a married relationship. In other words, uh, gay people do not, uh, do not, are not allowed to adopt. That is changing. Um, and you must be, you must have a job. So you must be financially okay, you must be married, and you must be healthy. And I think you have to be under 40. So, so anybody over 40, there's a few things, and it's quite hard in Australia. Okay, thank you, Leo. And good luck in your future adoption. Um, American agencies which encourage parents and surrogates to develop relationships are concerned that Chinese view the process as a business transaction. So they're only doing it to get uh, to get a passport. Surrogate mothers who hope to have a relationship with the family may be disappointed. They're often viewed as little more than fetus factories. Um, Annie. Yes. What's a fetus? The American spelling doesn't have a doesn't have an O in it. B. Yeah, Not an unborn born. baby. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Now, what do they mean by fetus factory? So remember, the Chinese only see it as a business transaction. So surrogate mothers don't really have a good relationship because the surrogate mothers are seen as fetus factories. So what's their job? Produce baby. <laughs> yeah, and nothing else. So just produce my baby and then go away. So another word instead of instead of feet is call them baby factories. Mm -hmm. So the their idea is make a baby, give it me, and then go and go away and do it again to somebody else. Not very nice. Okay, thank you, Annie. Can we have a break? Yes, Pearl. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is really new to me because I know uh, Taiwanese parents would go to the United States to give birth to their children. But I've never thought of the idea of having a surrogate mother. Uh, that's even easier. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but is it against the law? In Australia, um, you can only pay the expenses of the mother. So, in other words, if it, if she's off work, you can pay her wages. But you cannot make a huge um, you can't make a huge payment to them to have it for you. And generally, uh, I think you I think you have to have legal permission before you start. So you've got to go to court. So really, in Australia, it's not possible. Okay. And uh, um, were babies born in Australia automatically own uh, Australian citizenship? I think they do. But I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think they do. And the surrogacy murder hasn't occurred in your country yet because of the procedure is so smooth. 
it ha it has happened, it ha it has but, happened uh, but it's usually where it's usually where to it's allow mothers, mothers who can't have babies, yes, or ha can't have their own, to have one by a surrogate yeah, mother. So there was a recent case where a sister had a baby for her sister, for her brother. Yeah. So the the brother and his um, his wife, they gave their eggs and sperm to the sister. She had the baby, and now it belongs to the wife. And in fact, it's legally regarded as their child, not not the sister. So the mother has no control over the upbringing of the baby. Okay, so the surrogacy mother here uh, really just offer a, a, a birth bed for the baby, but the baby is from the sperm and the egg from the parents, from the Chinese couple, right? Not from yep, the surrogacy. That's right. Yep, that's right. No, not usually. So genetically, it, it's the parents. Okay, and I guess that the, these Chinese parents are pretty choosy too to choose uh, surrogate mothers. Uh, um, uh, what um, their characteristics? Like uh, p perhaps they prefer Caucasian or um, Chinese Americans. I would doubt they yeah, would choose the black. Yeah, I don't know, but the baby's still I Chinese. Yeah, right. But Chinese always think, you know, the fetus is uh, highly affected by the woman who bear them. I agree. I agree. But they still okay. won't go black. They still won't go black. Mm, no, they won't. <laughs> they, they, they will be afraid that their baby will be a little blackish when, they, when <laughs> it is born. Yeah, well, I, I don't know the answer to that, I but I think you're right. And they probably uh, use Chinese mothers. Oh, okay, ca Caucasian, because they like mixture. Yeah. yeah. Are they all right? Well, okay. we call we call people Eurasians, and they're usually very attractive. Yeah. They get the the best the best of both worlds. Do they? Yeah, I, I think they look attractive because they have the marriage from both sides. But um, mm. do they, oh, do, w w are they called names also, like Basta or Mixer? I, 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 I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I don't think in there private. really is a name for them. Oh, in private, <laughs> they're mm, pro yeah. probably called hi hybrids. Yeah. Right. Which is mm. not that respectful. It's not respectful. It's not respectful. Okay. Um, because like those uh, 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 women had children from American armies when they were stationed in their country? Mm. Oh. Okay, did you say you want a break? Or yes, what? we have five minutes. We have five minutes. Okay, we can do that. All right. Okay. Shall I go on now? Hello, Coco. Hello. Coco, what's prostitution? Um, woman 
sell herself. Yes, that's that, nicely put. Um, I'm going to say a person who receives money for sex. So a prostitute is somebody who is paid to have sex with somebody else. So a petition against the abolition of prostitution has created an uproar. So they're saying that um, James, not there, um, Alan. Yes. Does this mean that people are saying that prostitution should should be abolished or not abolished? Can you say it again? Right. Is is this? Uh, are the people annoyed? Uh, sorry, they're saying a petition is against the abolition. Abolition means get rid of. So, the petition is against it, and it's created an uproar. What's an uproar? Are they happy or not happy? Not. Uh, That's correct. So. They're saying that they're saying leave prostitution alone. So they're saying that prostitution should be allowed. So we consider everyone has the right to freely sell their charms. This means to freely sell themselves. So if people want to have sex and get paid for it, they should they should have that choice, and even to like doing so. So if if people want to do that and enjoy it, then it's up to them. The government should be, should not be, should not be involved in this area. So at the moment, prostitution is allowed in France, and everybody, most people believe it should be left altogether. We declare, don't touch my whore. A whore is a prostitute. And so that's what they're saying. Leave us alone. And they're saying slamming a bill. That means a bill is a, a legal a law. So there's a there's a thing in Parliament saying that they're trying to ab abolish it. So these people are saying in this petition, leave it alone. So in they're trying to reinforce the protection of prostitutes and fight against those who pay for sex. So. They're saying basically then leave leave this law alone. We do not want lawmakers to adopt rules governing our desires and pleasures. Prostitu now, prostitution is allowed in France, but soliciting, pimping, and minors are prohibited. Um, Johnny. Hey. Johnny, um, what's soliciting? I don't know. Okay. All right. Soliciting means that it, you, I don't mean you, but somebody is looking for sex. So if you go out looking for a prostitute, that's soliciting. Pimping means that you act as an agent. So if we put these on the thing, solicit it. If you solicit, 
it means you do it you find one yourself if you are a pimp that means that you have you know you have a group of prostitutes that that you sell so somebody could come to you and say I want a prostitute they're soliciting and the pimp will find somebody for you that's how the process works and this is legal so in France uh, this process is apparently legal however the bill seeks to penalize clients penalize means punish so clients are the people seeking seeking sex so penalize clients instead of sex workers so and they they want to phase out prostitution by making by charging people money and putting them in jail so it wants to fine them two thousand dollars if you pay for sex and to double it if they're caught doing it again for the first time it's two thousand second time four thousand it's expensive just a minute please Now, they mentioned that several people are signing this this petition. So uh, I don't know who these people are: Frederick, Big Beader, and lawyer Richard Malka. We do not. They're saying we do not defend prostitution. We defend freedom. And when Parliament gets involved in adopting rules on sexuality, everybody's freedom is threatened. Um, Tony, where are you? Tony? No, Tony? No, he's gone. Um, John, are you here? No, John? No. Nope. Uh, Claire, are you here? Claire, yeah. here in this paragraph, it said, we're not defending prostitution, we're defending freedom. What do they mean? Do these people agree with prostitution, do you think? It says, we do not defend prostitution. Do they agree with prostitution or not? They, they do. All right, Claire, I'll answer this. Don't worry, we're running out of time. So they say they're not defending prostitution. They don't think it's right. But they do not think the government should be uh, giving rules on sexuality. They say, leave us alone. It's our body. We should be able to do what we like. So they're saying everybody's freedom is threatened. So the manifesto, manifesto is a petition. So the petition was widely condemned on Twitter. I presume you have Twitter in in Taiwan. It's just a uh, social media. So this this manifesto it it's con condemned on Twitter and the French Minister of Women's Rights criticized it. So a lot of people are against it. Now the ma the women demanding to be able to freely decide what to do with their bodies. Now 
bastard. Um, Claire, what's a bastard? <laughs> Sorry for asking you all these nasty words. <laughs> Your definition is a slang, Ellen. So if you call somebody a bastard, it's not very pleasant. Um, a bastard is somebody whose parents are not married. Now, it used to be, about 50 years ago, it was actually a very offensive term. If somebody called you a bastard, it was very, very offensive, but times have changed. In Australia, only about one third of, of uh, couples are married. So two thirds of young people are not married, and a lot have kids. So in fact, two thirds of Australian children are now officially bastards. It doesn't matter, nobody cares anymore. We don't call them bastards, because we just call them children born to single parents. So uh, single parents mean they're not married and that's what, uh, but the word bastard it's a slang word now meaning not a nice person, he's a real he's a real bastard, it's not a particularly good word and it, we don't use it, they're using it here um, just as a descriptive term I think um, who should I? Johnny, are you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you, th do you agree with this law or not agree? Do you think prostitution should be banned? Uh, yes. <laughs> Is it allowed in Taiwan? No. Mm. What what about it, Pearl? Are they is it legal in Taiwan or illegal? It's illegal. It is not legal. The prostitutor and the buyer oh um I, I think the pros the prostitute will fail fail up. They don't. They don't find the pros, uh, the 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 buyer, but the yeah. prostitute will be sentenced. Yeah. What's it? Um, what's it? Yeah. In Australia, it's legal, uh, but it's carefully controlled. Uh, it must be in a legal place, so you cannot be an independent prostitute. You must be registered, registered. Uh, as a, uh, what they don't call them prostitutes, they, call, they call, them call them sex workers. And uh, every six months, every six months they, have they have to be tested for, uh, a, for HIV and um, STD. STD is sexually transmitted diseases. So it's carefully controlled and the idea is to make sure that they don't spread any diseases. And the general view here is that um, if you like, control is better than a ban because it will go on. So they'd rather have it controlled uh, than Underground if, you like. underground, if you like. I chose this article because I think there's, uh, to some degree of a sense in those people's opinion, to uh, to be against the law, um, play into their f uh, their own freedom, I, and I think that that's mm. kind of interesting. But I, I, I really think this, I, yeah. 
in the West, there's a the the freedom is valued. So, in other words, they're saying the government the government can have broad um, rules, but they should not they shouldn't legislate too narrowly. They shouldn't. It's none of the government's business. But it's a difficult area because it, you know, it depends on religious belief, religion, morality, um, a lot of culture, and a lot of things. And I think the cult, the Western culture, uh, morally, is less strict than in Asia. So in Taiwan you're very conservative, um, whereas in in uh, Thailand uh, prostitution is I don't know if it's legal, but it's certainly very very common. Uh, right. Um, mm. Nicholas is twelve 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 yeah. new here. Do, 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 yep. do you want to stop yep. here today and maybe we can I think, talk, uh, yep. continue this topic in the future with other materials? Okay. Do okay. Do okay. Okay. Thank Have you. Have a nice week. Have a nice week. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You too.